You're listening to Profit Without Worry, episode number 125. I've got a great guest on today, Rebel speaker, author, and coach, Dr. Michelle Mazur. We're going to be talking all about marketing, messaging, and selling during a global pandemic. Hey there, I'm Michelle Evans, and this is the show where coaches, experts, and business owners like us Get real about what it takes to create a profitable online business. I can tell you from experience that nonstop hustle plus random acts of marketing do not equal success. So how do we attract a steady flow of clients and sales without all the hustle? This is the Profit Without Worry podcast. Well, hey there, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. I hope this podcast finds you and those you love doing well, not just physically, but also mentally, emotionally, and financially. As we go through these turbulent times, I like to check in with myself, with my family, with my clients, with my friends, even (laughs) yelling at my neighbors across the street, (laughs) keeping our social distance, and really anyone I talk with just to see how they're doing because Sometimes we just need to stop and be aware of those feelings. And today I'm really excited to have a great business owner, friend, and colleague, Dr. Michelle Mazur, on to talk about messaging, marketing, and selling during a global pandemic. Just a little background before I get into Michelle's formal bio. Michelle currently lives just a few miles from my house, and we check in with one another on business and life stuff. In fact, Michelle and I got together it was either late October or early in November. I can't I can't remember which, but we got together to do our early 2020 planning. And we both felt so great about the plans we had in place. We had our first 90-day plan, we had a vision for the year, all sorts of stuff. So when everything started going sideways, I reached out to Michelle for a bit of a sanity check. And I am so thankful to have her in my life and just around the corner for sure. Before we jump into the interview, though, let me give you Michelle's former formal bio. So Michelle Mazur wants to know what makes you angry. Working with brilliant business owners who are shaking things up, but having trouble talking about it, she combines the tools of successful social movements with the qualitative research skills she earned in her communications PhD by getting clear on both what they stand for and what they're rebelling against, she helps her clients craft a powerful, captivating message that has audiences flocking to hire them and desperate to spread the word. And okay, this isn't part of her formal bio, I'll get back to that in a minute, but I can be a testament to that. I hired Michelle, even though she's a friend, to help me come up with Profit Without Worry. And I have to tell you, after years of trying to like dance around and come up with it my, myself, it was great to just work with Michelle one-on-one to have her help me. All right, so back to the formal bio. The author of three books, including the new, newly released Three Word Rebellion, which I highly recommend, and the host of the Rebel Rising podcast, Michelle has been featured in Fast Company, Entrepreneur, and Inc. She founded Communication Rebel in part because she thinks nothing is more heartbreaking than watching someone who could change the world fail just because they took 30 rambling minutes to explain what they do. She knows that having a clear and captivating message is the key to reaching the people you could help the most in a way that is powerful and feels effortless. All right, let's dive into the interview. Well, hey there, Michelle. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me back on the podcast, Michelle. Yes, it's the Michelle and Michelle show again. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Hey, so, you know, we know each other, but I want to make sure everybody else listening has a little bit of a background on who you are. So before we dive into your Rebel Take on messaging, marketing, and selling during a global pandemic when things sometimes seem to be changing hour by hour... I'd love for people to know a bit more about you and where you're coming from with your rebel truth. So give us the, give us the dirt, give us the background. 
Yes, yes. So I'm Dr. Michelle Mazur. My company is called Communication Rebel. And what we do there is we create three word rebellions. And that is a one of a kind message that really allows you to be a thought leader in your industry. And we create all the messaging around that one of a kind message. And it's all about really what do you stand for and what change do you want to create in the world so that you really can grow your following and grow your business. And so my background is I have a PhD in communication. I've been doing this for over 25 years now. And I've seen a lot in those 25 years <laughs> Although I've never been through a pandemic before, this is quite new for me. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I've always been about, you know, what makes you angry and what is the change that you want to create in the world. And when you start defining and standing up for those things, that's where our messaging comes from. And that is really how you create a loyal following of people who want to get to know you and want to buy from you. And it's really how you lead with intention and how you lead your industry. And I really do feel like we are in a unprecedented time where we are going to see the rise of new leadership in the online industry. Oh, I love it. And just as a quick plug, uh, for those of you who don't know, I, so Michelle and I are friends, but I also hired Michelle last year to take me through the three word rebellion. And I paid her just like any other client pays her. Um, because I really wanted to go through this experience myself. I, Michelle actually gave me early access to her book, which is an awesome book. But as I started going through it, I was like, you know, this is a great book. I love it. And I wanted more. I wanted more of Michelle's brain on my message because I knew that I wasn't pushing myself to go deep enough. And I love the work that I, that I did with you, Michelle. And um, it's been an evolution in my business as I realized how much of my stuff I needed to go back and change and everything is just rolling out slowly. So it's been really amazing to have set myself up before this whole thing even happened with messaging that was more aligned to who I was. So anyway, thank you for that. You are welcome. And Profit Without Worry is one of my favorite three-word rebellions that I got to help create. And so it's been really fun for me to watch you roll the messaging out with the podcast and with the other things that I know you have planned. Yes, all the fun stuff. Um, okay, so let's let's get back to the topic though, because one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on here is, um, you know, I know you just talked about your background, but you've, I mean, you taught at the college level as a professor of messaging, like, you know, messaging, <laughs> you know, yes. marketing, you know, you know, how this all comes together, how it works with psychology, all that kind of stuff. So before we even go fully there, I just want to know, has anything really changed for you and how you're approaching your business right now? And if so, how, and if not, um, why do you think that is? Yes, I think things have definitely changed for me. And the first thing I will say is that since you and I are in Washington State, in, in Seattle, we've been dealing with this COVID-19 for a little bit longer than the rest of the United States. So I kind of feel like we've settled in a bit more than the rest of the United States. Agree. <laughs> and which I guess is a blessing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> We've had more time to get used to it, I guess. Yeah. So I feel like I have more insight for some reason of what we're going through, of what people <laughs> are going through. And I will definitely say that um, the first week, um, it was just a complete freak out. So if you are in the space of, I am just cocooning, I am not doing any marketing, I am not doing any selling, I am just freaking out, I'm trying to take care of myself, I'm trying to take care of my family, I'm just trying to get my stuff in order, honor that, 
take care of you, take exquisite care of yourself. You need to, because that was the first thing that happened to me. Luckily, it was a non-client week for me. I found myself spending way too much time scrolling social media, especially Twitter, which get off of Twitter and social media. It's not great for your mind. <laughs> I know. It's so addicting though. I just... Uh I have to like set a time limit for myself. <laughs> me too. Me too. And also tell my husband to stop sending me tweets. Like he <laughs> likes to send me tweets during the day of like, did you see what so-and-so said? I'm like, okay, I can't. I can't right now. I cannot go down that rabbit hole. Um, but just, but realize that it's okay. You are having most likely a trauma response to everything that's going on and that's normal. So if you aren't doing any marketing right now and you're just kind of cocooning and you don't know what to do and you feel freaked out, that's fine. Take care of yourself and your family first. And then once I did a lot of self-care, a lot of time on the phone with my coach, with my friends, with my support system, um, then I started being like, okay, what, does need, what needs to change about my message? What needs to change about what I'm offering in my business? And so looking at, your, looking at my message, like most of my message is is it's fine. Like, I don't really have to worry about like, oh, am I using any language I shouldn't be using at this time? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty lucky that way. My business is online. I did do things like communicate immediately with my clients. Like, what happens if you get sick? What happens if I get sick? Um, I got rid of my rescheduling policy with them. Um, so like, if we need to extend, we can extend like no big deal. I also gave them more time with me as far as implementation of their messaging and their marketing. So instead of a 30-day period of implementation, I extended that to 45 days. So I communicated with them right away. But then I started thinking about like my upcoming podcast that I've already had in the in, in the can, right? And I'm like, oh, should I be putting that out? And one of them I was just like, it's fine. It's on storytelling. It's going out. Like I didn't have enough time to like to tweak it. But there was one that was going out for this following week. And I was like, this is still really good, but I need to give it more context. So I did an intro, like a pre-intro for it saying like when it was recorded, gave people context for how they should think about it as they listen to it. Um, and then you know, I started looking at some of my messaging around my offers and I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be talking about how I'm setting you up with messaging for the next three to five years. Maybe it's more about giving you a foundation and giving you flexibility <laughs> in your messaging at this time. Um, maybe that's a better positioning for my offers. So I started tweaking those little things. So I think there's some little adjustments I needed to make um, with my marketing. But I did pretty much scrap my content schedule. <laughs> for you know what? I did the same thing because I, I felt like, not that it was bad, mm -hmm. but I it don't know. It just wasn't right. It yeah, just didn't feel it relevant. Little, yeah. It felt a little tone deaf or like I was trying to muscle through without acknowledging kind of where we are now. Yes. Yeah. And not that we have to wallow in it. Like, I think that's a really smart thing to just say, hey, you know, I'm going to record a pre-introduction to this piece of content because it's still really good and still really valuable. Mm -hmm. But let me acknowledge the times that we're in. Like, that makes yes. a lot of sense. Yes. And the content was all about how I believe everybody's a thought leader. And I was like, no, this is still a real, this is a really good message for right now, but I just need a different introduction for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just giving it that context then just changes the episode. So, but also giving myself the grace of being like, these storytelling episodes are really good and I'm just going to let them go because I don't have the bandwidth right now to either record something new or <laughs> put a different intro on. So there's also like giving yourself the grace and compassion of just like doing what you can to fix your messaging. Yeah. Yeah. And for you and for me too, it's not so much as fixing it as just once 
once we were through the emotional trauma of the first week or two, it's like yeah. just getting it more in tune with the times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so what is your rebel take on marketing, messaging, and selling during these very uncertain times? Like, do you, do you think people should cocoon and hide out? Do you think people should be out there going crazy? Like, what's your take on that? I think you should absolutely still be marketing and selling because money is the lifeblood of your business. And yes, I think you should be tailoring your message to this time. But as I was mentioning to you, like I've had the best week of my business or the best day of my business since <laughs> this pandemic began. And so people are very much still spending money. They are still investing in their business. My clients who are coaches and therapists, their businesses are blossoming right now because people are looking and need that kind of support because they are in stress and anxiety. So this is not the time to hide out and not market and not sell. That doesn't mean you can't take a pause and reflect and tweak. And so I do think you should be marketing and selling. And if anybody tries to shame you for marketing and selling, then you should block those people, unfriend them, um, <laughs> just, you know, like just ignore them because this pandemic, we don't know when it's going to end. Like, it's not going to go away. It's going to ebb and flow and go on for months. If it's anything like the, the Spanish flu in 1918, that was, you know, there was a, like, hot zones in the spring and then it kind of ebbed in the summer and then there was another huge outbreak in the fall. And so we could see that again with COVID-19. We don't know. So if you're not marketing and selling during the pandemic, you are not going to have a business. So you have to be thinking like, how do I want to sell my services? Do I need to sell something different? Do I need to create a new offer? That's one of the things that I'm looking at because most of my services are very, you know, high touch, um, premium. So I'm looking at other services, consulting offers. Do you have a course that you haven't touched in a million years that you could dust off? <laughs> like that's still very aligned with what you offer and what, who you are and your message, but that you can put out there that, pe that serves and that people need and fulfill, you know, that helps people. But what is it that you can be putting out there right now that can really help people? For sure. I 100% I agree with that. And really, just like you said, like, I want to underscore this. Making sales, serving people, however you serve them, if that's, you know, a service, if that's a course, if that's, you know, whatever, that is the lifeblood of your business. Without that, your business is, is done like, or it's at least paused. And we're so lucky as online business owners that we can keep going. You know, we don't have to pause. We're really, really blessed with that. Um, and I know, Michelle, we, we've texted a little bit back and forth about some of this, but I'd like to switch a little bit to mm -hmm. talk about some marketing and messaging in the wild. <laughs> yeah. Can you give me, because, you know, as people think about this, um, I can see people going a few different ways with their marketing and messaging. Um, and I'd love it if you could just give me an example or two, you know, eliminating names to protect the guilty of marketing, messaging, even selling that's gone wrong, where business owners are just screwing it up right now. Yes, I see like there are different types of responses going on. So I see this response, which is almost like an ostrich response of like, oh, everything is completely normal. It's a business as usual. So, you know, people are proceeding with their big affiliate launches right now. Like, 
nothing has happened. There's no mention of the pandemic. There's no mention that we are most definitely headed for an economic recession, if not a depression, because of the pandemic. And it's just like business as usual. Their affiliates are pro- uh, promoting it, although I feel like the affiliates are doing a better job adapting. Mm-hmm. But it's just this like, alternate universe that they're living in. And I'm like, would it be better to put a pause on this big course launch that I know you only launch once a year and is probably the majority of your revenue? And because it's just so out of step and out of alignment for the times we're in. And it makes me, I mean, I mean, I'm kind of fascinated as the, you know, scientist, the researcher that I am. I'm like, is anybody going to pay $3,000 for a DIY course anymore in these economic times? I don't know. Let's find out. (laughs) So keep doing your launch. (laughs) And I'll watch from the sidelines. Yeah. And you know, I mean, Michelle, you and I got together. What was it like late October, early November? I can't remember when we got together. December. I don't remember. But when we did our 2020 plan and, you know, I had that group program that I was thinking about launching. And part of the whole thing is that I wanted to do some in-person stuff Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I got to just hit the pause button on that. That is, it is not the right offer. (laughs) It is not the right time. And yeah, I had a lot of stuff lined up for it, but it could just go in the for later drawer. And that's okay because I have other things I can do. Yes. Yes. So yeah, so I hear, so I see that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I see people who I feel are just like, anxiety promoting right now. They're just, they're in this anxiety response of like the economy is so certain. Maybe their business isn't on the best financial foundation. So they're like, oh my gosh, people don't forget about me. So they're like giving away like all of their courses. Like you mentioned someone giving away their courses, all like five courses for 80% off and, or they're just like, oh, come to my free this. Or like one of my clients is in the yoga industry and all the yoga teachers are like free yoga classes. And she's like, no, I'm charging for my online yoga classes that I'm doing because I need to make money at this. And it's of value and people don't value free. Um, So I see this like anxiety response of like, oh, I'm being of service by giving all my stuff away for free. But there's this kind of panicky anxiety energy behind the messaging. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you just... It's like something just feels a little bit off about it. It's like free, free, free. And look at me showing up and giving value. And like, you've never seen these people show up in this way before. Right. With all this free stuff. Yes. Yeah. um, Because there's nothing wrong with like doing a webinar, for example. No. But it needs to have the right intention behind it. Yeah. And it needs to be aligned with your overall messaging (laughs) and marketing. Yeah. Like what is my intention here? Is my intention here to actually be of service? Because I I mean, I know we're going to talk in a few minutes about people who are doing this right. Like is my intention here to show up and be of service and to really lead my audience, myself, my business Or is my intention here to hope to God I make some sales because I'm going to be really screwed in two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. Because if it's, if it's that, if it's like, oh, I better make some sales like now, like yesterday, otherwise, oh my God, I can't, you know, buy food or whatever. People will pick up on that. Yes. And it's just a really scary place for everyone to be. And so they won't be able to buy from you. <clears throat> but I know, for example, I had a client who routinely does interactive workshop type um, webinars mm-hmm. and she just rolled out a new one and she had amazing response from her audience, amazing response. And at the end she had an offer and people snapped it up like crazy, but it was totally in line with who she is. 
mm-hmm. and what she does and how she works with people. So it didn't seem weird. And she had a great energy going into it. She's just like, Hey, you know, we, we've got time. Let's do this thing now. Yeah. And it was more of a fun, like, Hey, we're all, we're all kind of in this together. Let's be in this together together and let's actually get some stuff done. And so it's not, I mean, I know you weren't saying this, but it's not that you can't give stuff away for free, but you have to have the right intention. Yes, exactly. Like I think there's, um, so a great example of somebody who's doing this right now is um, Tara McMullen over at the What Works Network. Like she is showing up and she has hosted a, like um, a workshop on how to host a virtual retreat. And it was free. And because a lot of people are wondering how to pivot into virtual, she's done a lot of virtual retreats in her time. So she's like, yeah, I'll share what I know. Cause that's that's going to be helpful. She also hosted something about how to start a podcast and how to create your podcast and position it. That's super helpful. People are wondering that right now. So, and she, but she's doing it from this, like, how can I show up and serve? Yeah. And it feels like that. It's, there's no like hidden agenda to it. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and, and I think then people know it, like there's no pitch attached to it. Like she's just like, oh, you know, like, and people, and she's also is now doing like a free 30 day trial of the What Works Network. So if you want to join her community, you can go and check it out. And that's awesome. That's all ways people can be like how she's being of service right now and how her business is being of service. Yeah. And it's in line with what she normally does (laughs) and her message (laughs) and her message and her offer. And like, she's being generous for sure. And she's aligning to the opportunity or where people's mindsets are right now, but she's not throwing out like a panic offer. (laughs) Yes. 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 So that's a difference. All right. So there's some things that are kind of crazy happening out there. So, uh, and you just, you know, gave us one that's going right. Where else have you seen where people are doing things that are going right? Yeah. Another great example um, is another Tara, Tara Newman at the Bro Bold Leadership Revolution. And she was in the middle of she doesn't call them launches. She calls them encouragement periods, which I frankly really love just the reframing of a launch into an encouragement period. But she as the leader of what the, of the Brave Society, which is just a professional association of women business owners that we get together, we do CEO debriefs. So she was in the middle of this launch when all of this went on and she decided to proceed with the launch, but just proceed differently and talk about the Brave Society in terms of how it was supporting women through these tough times, which was excellent. But then she started also using her coaching skills to talk about how what we're experiencing is trauma and how she, like she brought her um, CFO on to a Facebook live and talked about the different financial resources that are available and how you can worst case scenario plan for mm. your business. And just, you know, it was just very giving of these resources. And yes, you could join the Brave Society then, but oh my gosh, you got so much value out of watching this free content that whether you joined or not, like it was just huge value. She built huge amounts of trust and it was so aligned with her message. And even like she was talking about how you would have to have bold conversations with your credit card company, like call them now and ask them if you can defer payments or get a lower interest rate because now is a good time to do it because structurally this is different than 2008 because the banks aren't failing. The banks are fine. They're doing well. (laughs) So the banks are willing to help out consumers right now in a way they couldn't in 2008. So 
that like I was like, oh, this is really helpful. It's a way like she's helping people ease their anxiety, giving people something to do to like shore up their business finances right now, and right in the middle of her launch. So that was like a great way to pivot the launch and just be a resource of what she knew. And she had a really rough time during her 2000, during the 2008 recession with her, her and her husband's first business that actually ended in bankruptcy. So she was able to tell that story and bring it in and how they survived and navigated that and some of the tools they used. So that was helpful as well. So that's a great example. And again, that's somebody who, you know, is reading the times, knows, is looking ahead and knows what people are going to need. Mm-hmm. So what do you need? You need you need tools. You need some heads up of things that you can proactively do to protect your money situation. But you also need a network of peers and, you know, friends that understand what you're going through because it's not like we can't go file for unemployment. <laughs> we, you know, no. we can't, we're not getting sick pay. So you need this group of people. And so she's, she's showcasing this is what it could be like to be a part of this. And this is why it's a good investment now is because we're going to be here to support each other through this. And PS, I've already been through a hard time like this and I can teach you what I learned from that. Yes. Yes. And so I just loved everything she put out. She was putting out bonus podcasts that week. Like she was like, uh, A, I was impressed with how quickly her podcast team worked. (laughs) No. <laughs> and getting out like all this extra content. I mean, wow, so nimble. But just like her ability to pivot that launch and just kind of abandon her plans. I mean, I think one of the things is it's like it's great to have a plan. Like I do think, you know, one of my new mantras these days is like rebellions require plans. I know in Star Wars, they never show you the, like the planning stage of taking down the Death Star because that would be boring, but they do require plans, but they also, if the plan doesn't work anymore, you have to pivot from that. And she did that so brilliantly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the thing that's different than the, the first launch that you talked about where it's like, you know, an ostrich putting their head in the sand and being I know, like, stick to the plan. Yeah. I, like so, plan. so rigidly, like I have this plan. This is my plan. This is what we're doing. That is not going to work when times change. In fact, I don't think it works just any time. I think it's great to have a plan, but even in the best of times, there's usually something that goes crazy and you have to be nimble in the moment and say, all right, I got to respond to this. Yeah. I mean, even just like an email going out with the wrong link, like, you know, things just happen all the time. Yeah. And it's like, yes, the plan is great. And this morning I was even thinking about, because right now I usually do my like 90 day content plan and I do my 90 day plan for Q2. Yep. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to do a 30 day yep. content plan and like a 90 day plan for Q2 with yeah, that's about as much as I'm willing to commit to right now. I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to plan. Like, and I'm a planner, man. Like, I love planning. That is my jam. I know, PhD. I know. <laughs> like, I mean, my strengths finder, three out of my five top skills are strategic. Like, like, pl- like I am... Ooh, I am a woman with a plan. I love to implement plans. Yep. And I'm just looking at this. I'm like, yeah, I think I can have a high level 90 day plan for my business, but I think I'm going to have to replan every 30 days. Well, it's just like what you and I were talking about. Like my book, The Three Word Rebellion, I have been adamant that I am never, ever, 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 ever going to have a Kindle version of this book. Underscore bold highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like the book is a workbook. It's meant to be written in. Like I'm never going to do it. And then Yesterday, Amazon pretty much announced that they are not shipping any non-essential things for at least a month, which is books. If you ordered a new coffee maker, it's not coming for a month. And so that means my book is not being shipped, which means 
I'm not going to be generating any leads, which means, oh, maybe I should release that as a Kindle. (laughs) (laughs) So suddenly that plan needs to change. Yes. And so my never, ever, ever, ever has become, yeah, maybe I need to do that. And how quickly can I get this done? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's such a perfect example. Cause I know, I mean, you went to great effort expense. The book is so pretty. Yeah. And planning. And I mean, even in the first, I don't know, page or two, it says, you know, this book is meant to be written in. It's, it's, it's not <laughs> like, it's not meant to just be gorgeously put on your shelf. It's meant to be lived with and used And I know that that was a big part of you writing that book. And now it's going to be Kindleized. And yeah, you you just got to go with the times. Yes. And now I'm going to have to rewrite that that intro. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for reminding me, Michelle. You're welcome. I'm going to have a different intro. (laughs) I've only read that book a few times, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It's true, though. And those are great examples of you know, things that we do our best and we really try to get these systems in place for our business that work really well until they don't don't. work for the times. And then we got, we just need to pivot a little bit. So, I mean, we kind of talked a little bit about it, but I just love to kind of solidify this. What do you think are the differences between people who are doing it right and those who are not doing it right? I think the people who are doing it right are nimble. So they're going to be flexible in their marketing and their plans. So agile. So creating new offers. They're going to look at what assets that they have. They're not going to be afraid of worst case scenario planning, right? They're, you know, they're going to stay on top of their numbers. Yeah. They're not going to be afraid of calling their student loan lender and being like, yeah, I'm going to take the government up on that two months of deferment. Thank you very much. Right. You're going to be making the bold asks. I also think that they're still going to invest in their businesses. Um, I was doing a podcast interview right before this. This is not the time to hoard money. We are the economy and we keep each other going. So keep investing in businesses, you know, keep paying, you know, don't fire your team. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You know, don't, you know, if you are on contract with someone, don't try to get out of that contract Yeah, because we are the economy. And so if we're spending money, there's more money circulating. So I think small businesses are looking at that as well. Like, how can I be generous? Like, how can, like, and sometimes it's little things. Like, I've decided that I'm paying my housekeeper whether or not she's going to clean my house. Me too. In fact, I specifically, when I Venmoed her the money, I said, paying you to stay away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> here's your money please don't come thanks yeah. <laughs> um and so yeah i think it's that nimble that flexibility that staying on top of the numbers that keeping the economy going and also knowing that this too shall pass that this is your time to lead. It is your time to show up, to do business differently, to really double down on relationships. We've had this time of like automation and bro marketing and like all I need is more leads and more Facebook ads. And I know you do Facebook ads, but you do them the right way. (laughs) No, but it's true. And it really is that time. In fact, the first podcast I did about the pandemic, I was like, thank God I had a network I could reach out to because without people like you and the other folks I reached out to, I, I don't, I probably wouldn't have gotten out of my, my panic and my upset quite as fast. Yeah. Because I actually look at this as, um, a great reset. I'm actually writing, yeah. working on a blog post about this, that this could level the playing field because I feel so long we've had this like guru culture mm-hmm. and the gurus have been selling us these one size fits all templates and blueprints and formulas for so long now. And guess what? They've never been here. 
and they don't know what works or they don't have a proven formula for a pandemic. None of us have that. And what worked, they don't know if it's going to work anymore. So the playing field's now level. And so all of their fancy automations and funnels and hacks and all of those things, it, I'm, I don't know if treating people like numbers is the way to go. I think the best way to go is by being human and creating a strategy that works for your business and not like actually thinking. I mean, weird, like thinking for yourself and for your business and making strategic decisions, which none of those courses have ever taught any of right. us. And I think that is going to be a, oh, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> like, I'm so too. excited for that time of being human and thinking and strategy and more personalized service instead of these mass courses and let's just generate leads and I just want your money out of your bank account and into mine. And I mean, I have my own thoughts, but what do you think or what would you predict are the business impacts of kind of continuing business as normal with kind of how things have been done up to this time? Um, what do you think the business impact of getting that right or wrong is? Well, I don't think it's going to be that easy to sell a $3,000 course. Yep. Yeah. I think people are going to want a higher level of service. Um, I think people are going to want more customized solutions. They're going to want more strategic thinking. I mean, even in courses and programs, which is a great time. Like if you do have a course, like how can you add more personalized service mm -hmm. to your course? I mean, even if it's like I'm right now, I'm taking like, it's only a, like, it was a $450 human design course, but we have a weekly Q and A session with the creator of the course and it's great. She answers all of our questions and like, I get so much out of that. So there's like so much customization because of just adding a Q and A session. And that's not, it's not costly. No, it's not but it's hard. It's huge. And it was yeah. a $450 course. And, you know, you see these $2,000 courses that don't really do that. Or there's so many people in the $2,000 course, you're never going to get your question answered. Yeah. Or if you do, it's so generic. That yes. And because help. they don't know you, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, I'm in this 10 person group program and she knows me. Yeah. And so she can answer my questions. And so that feels so personal and customized that I would have paid probably $1,000 for this course. That's and, awesome. And so, you know, thinking about that, like, how can you bring that in? So like, yeah, so I have my, I have my predictions. Like, I don't think courses like that are going to sell well. I think people are going to want more high-touched, personalized service. I, uh, my personal bias is I hope we see people wanting more one-on-one -on -one work. Mm -hmm, me too. Because I feel like people for a long time, I don't know, thought somehow one-on-one -on -one work was lesser than taking a course. A hundred. Not only that, but almost that, um, cause I've always thought one-on-one -on -one work was so much more valuable because me too. I, I get your, or, or very small groups, like, you know, a group of maybe 10 or fewer. Sometimes, sometimes groups work really well in terms of just getting more brains on your stuff. Yes. But still having some one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I love one-on-one -on -one stuff because it's so much more personalized. Like I wanted to pay you for one-on-one -on -one time in so that I could get your brain on my business because I wanted, I want, I didn't want just the generic stuff. I wanted, I, I mean, I could have had the $10 book, yeah, which was fine. I bought that too, but I wanted your brain on my business. Yes. And when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, like I'm able to go deep. I'm able to do all the analysis of their free writing. Like mm -hmm. you are like my research project for two, three months. Yeah. So I get to go deep with people in a way that I don't, you know, in like a group program or a course, you know, and it's just so much 
nicer. And that's, you know, like I value working one-on-one with people too. And so I've, I've always thought that was so funny that people would spend, you know, $2,000 on a course without blinking. And yet they would, you know, like be like, oh, you charge four grand for working with you one-on-one. And I'm like, but you spent two grand on it or three grand on a DIY course. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. You're going to walk away with something so that's more. only for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Versus a course you probably aren't going to finish. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe even get a third of the way through. Yeah. I just have to say thank you so much for coming on and talking about this. I think it's so important that we open up the dialogue and have some fun with this. Yeah. And I just want to know, you know, what what are any last thoughts that you have on getting back to normal or even just like things that you're doing to take care of yourself so that you can stay grounded during this time as things kind of, you know, seem to change sometimes even hourly. Yes. So I am making sure I get a lot of sleep. Mm. I'm hydrating. (laughs) With water, not with, you know. Yeah, water. I have actually cut back on my drinking just (laughs) because. (laughs) Not that it was out, neither one of us were out of control, but I'm like, I gotta, I just need to be very taking care of myself. Well, it's also about the immune system because alcohol yes. suppresses your immune system. So uh, I have, you know, like maybe a glass of wine once a week, maybe at most. And I'm still going out for walks when I can, um, neighborhood walks, just because I can walk in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's out. Away. Nobody's yeah. out. I can walk. Although yesterday um, we live near um, a residence for seniors and I turned down one street and I swear all I saw was white hair and it was like, oh, this is like an obstacle course. This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> and so I like had to walk down the middle of the street until I could turn another corner. And um, so yeah, walking and moving and just taking time to journal. I rely on my coach a whole lot to help me manage my mind. And I'm still looking forward. Like I haven't abandoned my plans for 2020. Um, I'm just slowing things down a bit because I don't know what's going to happen because there is a possibility that this might be over in two months. I don't know. Yeah, none of (laughs) us do really. None of us do. This, I mean, I just don't know. So I'm just, you know, slowing things down a bit, journaling, listening to music, moving cuddling with my cats, social distancing with my husband, you know, taking care of myself. Just the normal stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Routine, I think is really important. Like sticking with my routine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm sure that people listening are going to want to check you out. So where should they go? And do you have anything that they should be downloading to think about their own messaging? Yes. So if you want to get a start on creating your own one of a kind message that will be flexible enough for you to navigate this uncertain time, you can definitely check out the three word rebellion and get a taster of that before you get the book, which will be soon available on Kindle, apparently. (laughs) No, I promise it will be. And you can get that at threewordrebellion.com. And you can find out more about me on my website. That's drmichellemazur.com. And I'm most Mostly on Instagram these days, and that's at Dr. Michelle Mazer. Feel free to slide right into my DMs and let me know you listened to this show and what you took away from it. I'd love to hear from you. Wow, oh, that's great. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing all this stuff. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is fantastic. As you were listening to this interview today, did you think of someone who could use these insights about navigating building a business in these trying times? If you could think of someone who could use this, would you do both of us a big favor and share this episode with them? It's really easy to do from whatever podcasting app you're listening on, or just share the URL for today's show at profitwithoutworry.com forward slash episode dash one two five, and your friend can listen right there on any device. And don't forget to download your freebie, Five Steps to Profit Without Worry. You can get that at today's show notes or profitwithoutworry.com forward slash free so that you can see what it takes to create a movement with your marketing. 
All right, I hope you have a really great week. And I'll see you back here next week, same time, same place, on another great episode of Profit Without Worry. See you then.